Welcome to Psalm 45. I'm changing the name of this psalm to the Beloved, rather than the beauty of the warrior, and I think it'll be obvious to you as we go through the psalm. It begins, I'll read a few verses in Greek, Is totelos, iperton aliothesomenon tis is kora, is sinisin, o thi iper tu agibitu. Exiorev xato ikardiamu logon agathon. Lego ego ta erga mu to vasoli iglosa mu kalamos grammateos oxigrafu. To the director, as many places it says this, for the changings, and I'm guessing this has something to do uh, possibly with the music or uh, in the temple of the changings of the people that were in charge of certain things. To the sons of Korah, which have been the last three, uh, last two chapters in this one, we mentioned about him. And for contemplation, understanding, scene, an ode, O-D, O-D, uh, over the beloved Agape II. Now, title, titles I have mentioned that were possibly added later, not with the original. We don't know for sure. But in this one here, we have the S word, the agape two, of the beloved. Who is the beloved for the beloved? We see in the Old Testament, in Isaiah 5, 1, it says, I will sing indeed to the agape two, the one being loved of me, a song of my agape two, beloved concerning his vineyard. A vineyard became to the one being loved, or the agape two, on a horn in a plentiful place. Now we know in the New Testament that this is used for Jesus with the vineyard and so forth. Then in Zechariah 12.10, it says, And I will pour out upon the house of David and upon the ones dwelling Jerusalem a spirit of favor and compassion. And they shall look to me on whom they pierced, because they treated me despitefully. And they shall beat over him with a beating of the breast as over a agape two, beloved one. And they shall grieve with grief as over the firstborn. And he was the firstborn of God. Zechariah 12.10. Who else could I be talking about the agape too. It has to be Jesus. How the Jews can miss this? Well, they do. And then in Zechariah 13, 6, even more. And I will say to him, what are these wounds in the middle of your hands? And he will say, the ones which I was struck by the house of my beloved, agape too. So the beloved. Now in the New Testament, we see this again. In Matthew 3, 17, where it says, And behold, a voice from out of heaven saying, This is my Son, the Beloved, in whom I take pleasure. And I believe that's when he came up uh, from the baptism with John. And then in 17, 5 of Matthew, it says, uh, Yet of his speaking, behold, a cloud giving light overshadowed them, uh, Peter, James, and John, when they were on the Mount of transfiguration. And behold, there was a voice from out of the cloud saying, this is my son, the agape too, in whom I take pleasure in. Hearken to him. So the agape too, uh, I believe, is Jesus. But then also it says in Ra Ra Romans 1, 7, to all the ones being in Rome, agape, uh, the beloved of God, chosen holy ones. So we are also the beloved of God, but Jesus is the beloved one that I believe it's talking about uh, in uh, the title. And then in verse 1 uh, to 3, I believe it's talking about Jesus. It says, My heart discharged forth a good 
word, which Jesus did. I speak of my works to the king, which could be the father. Erga, ergonomics is works. My glossa is a reed pen of a scribe writing fast. So right here you see that this is not the tongue. The tongue doesn't is not a reed pen. It's a figure of speech uh, as a communication device going into a reed pen of a scribe writing fast. More beautiful in beauty than the sons of men. And so it's talking about something other than man, a higher plane than man. Who else but Jesus? Favor was poured out on your lips, and that would be on Jesus' lips. On account of this, God blessed you into the eon. Now, who could else could that have been? But uh, Jesus, he's into the eon. None of these other people, well, they, I suppose you could say if they were uh, raised from the dead and they were with God, they were, but I believe it's talking here again about Jesus. Gird your broadsword upon uh, your thigh, O mighty one, in your beauty. And then in Revelation 19, 15, it says, And from out of his mouth goes forth a sharp, double-edged broadsword, same broadsword, that with it he should strike the nations. And he shall tend them with a rod of iron, and he treads the wine vat of the way of the wine of the rage of the wrath of God Almighty. Revelations nineteen fifteen. Gird your broadsword upon your thigh, O mighty one in your beauty, who else but Jesus? And in your fineness even stretch tight your bow and greatly prosper and reign. And Jesus will reign as king. Because of truth and gentleness and righteousness even shall your right hand guide you wonderfully in gentleness and truth. These are all uh, attributes of Jesus and righteousness. I could have um, quoted verses on verses. Your arrows are being sharpened, O mighty one. Peoples shall fall underneath you in the heart of the enemies of the King of God the Father. And when Jesus returns, I believe it's referring to. Now we have a quote from uh, Hebrews 1, verses 8 and 9, which Paul is uh, talking about uh, how God, how Jesus is higher than the angels, and how uh, this is, these verses are referring to Jesus. And so Paul is saying that. It's not only my opinion, but it says here, uh, your throne, O God, into the eon of the eon, Jesus. A rod of straightness is in the, is the rod of your kingdom. You loved righteousness and detested lawlessness, which he did. On account of this, God, your God, anointed you. God, your God. So he is the son uh, with oil of exaltation above your partakers. And almost an exact quote. Now, you wouldn't see this if you didn't have an apostolic Bible, because if you had an English-only Bible, that was all, they're all translated, the Old Testaments are all translated from the Hebrew, you wouldn't see this. It's the exact quotation in the Greek. And um, to me, it's a way to read the Bible, going with the, like I'm doing it with the uh, Greek, and hopefully um, people that, you people that are watching this are, uh, getting something out of this that you would not get by just reading an English-only Bible. In verse 8, now it turns into uh, the, what I call the feminine. It's all about uh, m women. And it begins, myrrh uh, and balsam and cassia of your garments from palaces of ivory. From out, and that could be New Jerusalem, from out of which daughters of kings gladdened you in your honor. Okay? Daughters of kings will come to Jesus in the future. The queen stood at your right in having put around clothes interwoven with gold being embroidered. 
Now, who is the queen? Well, I think we're told that in Matthew 12, 42 by Jesus. It says, uh, the queen of the south, that was the queen of Saba, shall rise in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to even to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. So she will be there with Jesus. And then it continues, Akuson, acoustics, here, Thigatir, and daughter is almost a transliteration, and behold, uh, and lean your ear and forget your people in the house of your father. And then we see in Matthew 21, 5 and John 12, 15, uh, it says, say to the daughter of Zion, the daughter of Zion, here, you know, here, here, O daughter, Behold, your king comes to you, gentle and being mounted upon a donkey, and a foal, an offspring of a beast of burden. So there we have the daughter with Jesus. And then in 11, even the king uh, desired your beauty, the beauty of Jesus, for he is your Lord, and you shall uh, do obeisance to him. The daughter of Tyre, or a daughter, and a daughter of Tyre, it could be a daughter or the daughter, shall come with gifts. Now, where do we see that in the New Testament? And I have it right here. And from there, having risen up, 724 Matthew, I believe. Uh, Is it Matthew? No, Mark, 724. And from there, having risen up, he went forth into the boundaries of where? Tyre (laughs) and Sidon. And he entered into the house of uh, wanting no one to know, but was not able to be unaware. For a woman having come about him of which her, uh, her young daughter had an unclean spirit, having come, fell at his feet. The woman fell at his feet, maybe bringing gifts, as it says. And the woman was a Greek. Sarah Phoenician by race, and she asked him that he should cast the demon from out of her daughter. So there we see uh, this here: the daughter of a daughter of Tyre, and a daughter of Tyre probably be better. I put the, but a. The rich uh, will implore your face. Uh, the rich, and we'll jump over it. Uh, peop, uh, the rich of the people will uh, go to uh, implore him. Uh, And then where do we see that? In the New Testament with Jesus. In Luke 19, 2. And behold, there was a man by name called Zacchaeus. And he was a chief tax collector. And this one was rich. Luke 19, 2. So there we go. The rich came. All the glory of the daughter of the king within with bordered Fringes of gold being put around, being embroidered. The virgins shall be carried to the king after her. The ones near her shall be carried to you. Now exactly what this is referring to, I couldn't find anything. I'm not exactly sure with with, uh, these women's, but the virgin daughters. They shall be carried in gladness and exaltation. They shall be led into the temple of the king. Now, the temple of the king, the temple, there's no temple of a king in the Bible. The uh, only temple is uh, that Jesus uh, will be a ruler, a king of sorts in the Ezekiel temple, and maybe that's, that's what it's referring to in the daughters coming there. In place uh, of your father's, your sons were born. In the in place of your fathers, your sons were born. Now, what sons is it talking about? Now, does Jesus have sons? And it says, and you shall place them as rulers over all the earth. And we see in Revelation 1, 5, and from Jesus Christ, the trustworthy witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. 
Jesus is the ruler. You shall place them as rulers over all the earth. Your name, I will make your name remembered in every generation and generation. Whose name is remembered? Jesus. On account of this, peoples will make acknowledgement to you and to the eon. What other person but Jesus? And into the eon of the eon forever, even in uh, after the end of heaven and earth. Jesus' name uh, will be known to the peoples. Wonderful Psalm 45. I started it and I was wondering, well, what is God going to show me here? And boy, did he show me a lot. Uh, it's a wonderful Psalm. Is it, I, it's Jesus. It's like, You have 50, Psalm 53, I think it is. Oh no, Isaiah 53. But this is every bit as, uh, as good, I believe, once you see it, and you see it in the Greek, especially. Our next uh, Bible video seminar is going to be in Psalm 46. The Lord is a helper in our afflictions, and we are all going through afflictions, so we'll find out about this help that we have and how we can accept it. Hope you join us next seminar. Until then, God bless.